Hey everybody. Uh, so today we are going to talk about single crossovers, double crossovers, and mapping genes in eukaryotes. Mapping genes with the three-point cross. Now, I think if you can master the three-point cross, you can pretty much understand everything there is uh, to understand in classical genetics. So that's why I like to end uh, this part of the course on classical genetics with the three-point cross. So to start, let me just, instead of writing out this whole definition for you, here we have a definition of a single crossover. So a physical exchange of chromosome segments between two non-sister chromatids at one location in a tetrad. Okay, and we're, I have a, a neat way I like to diagram these and, and it helps to explain single crossovers and double crossovers and useful when we get to uh, the three-point cross as well because it helps you see where these different classes of uh, recombinant gametes are coming from and we'll talk more about gamete classes in a moment. So let's start with a genotype like this. Let's say ABD linked on one chromosome in the little a, little b, little d allele linked on the other chromosome. And now normally I diagram the chromosomes going um, I guess in a vertical direction. But for for analyzing crossovers, I like to diagram them on the side. And so here's one chromosome of a tetrad, and this would be what the P arm, and this would be the Q arm, right? So petite and, and Q, whatever Q stands for, of one chromatid, and then the other chromatid is there. And let me put our three genes in here, or alleles for three genes. So the big uh, dominant alleles up top, and then I will diagram the other chromosome down here. And I'll put little a's here, little b's here, little d's there. Now, okay, so if a single crossover was going to happen, it could happen between, we could call this interval one right here, or interval two. So interval one is between genes A and B, interval two is between B and D. Now, if no crossover happened between any of these genes, so maybe it happens over here, we would call the gametes that came from this crossover, non -cro uh, from this tetrad as non-crossover gametes, non-crossover with respect to these three genes. And the genotypes of the gametes would be as follows. So during anaphase one, this chromosome goes that way, this one goes down, and eventually we end up with gametes here with these genotypes. And we're gonna call all of these, all of these are non-crossover gametes. NCO, so NCO gametes. Now, let's look at what happens when we see a single crossover between A and B. So again, genotype of the individual in which uh, which is making the meiotic cells. So same thing with the chromosome that's on top has the big A alleles, big B allele and big D allele. Uh, and here is going to be a crossover between A and B. I'm gonna diagram that, it's going down like that. Okay, and you'll see why I did that in a moment. So here's the other chromosome down here. Here's the little a allele 
there's the crossover going up. And there's the big B and big D allele. So it's going to look something like that. And the little a, oh, little b, and little d are down here. Okay, so little a, little b, little d. Okay, so this is a single crossover right here between genes A and B. Let me go back to the other diagram. So what happened was, you know, essentially we joined this piece down here and this piece up here. And that's why we have B and D still up top and little b and little d still down bottom. See that? Big B, big D, little b, little d. Now, when these chromosomes segregate from one another during meiosis, we're going to end up with a couple of non-crossover gametes, right? So this one is going to be a non-crossover. Eventually, as, as um, when meiosis finishes, we will have non-crossover gamete from this chromatid, a non-crossover gamete from this chromatid. But these ones right here, these will be crossover gametes. So let's see, what genotype uh, will this one be? So centromere is going this way, so I'm going to put the A, big A, here. And then I'm going to follow this. Now this big A allele is connected to the little b allele and the little d. So I'm going to call this a single crossover gamete. And this one right here is attached to this centromere, which is going this way. So I'm going to put the little a here, big B, big D. Okay, so this is just an easy way to keep track of all the gametes and the different genotypes. And this is a single crossover gamete. And I can introduce this now. So these are what we would call reciprocal genotypes. Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Did I spell that right? Hold on a second here. Um, sometimes I second guess myself on this. It's annoying when you're re you're recording a YouTube video for your class and you don't have time to do second takes. And what I should do is just type it into the computer. Yes, okay, I did that right. Reciprocal, at least according to my notes. P-R-O-C-A-L. Okay, so reciprocal uh, genotypes, what does that mean? So if we see a big A up here, and a little b here, and a little d here, we should see a little a here, big B here, big D there. So these are reciprocals of one another. So these are gonna be part of the same class of single crossovers. So we'll call this single crossover class one. Now, that was a crossover between genes A and B in interval one. What happens if we cross over, or if this tetrad experiences a crossover between genes B and D? Well, we can do the same thing, draw the same type of diagram. So you know what, I'll diagram, I'll look just a race uh, to demonstrate the crossover. So one of the nice things about using a pencil. So A, B, D, A, B, D. And little a, little a, little b, little d. Little a, little b, little d. Again, the genotype can be written like that. So this is the genotype of the diploid organism um, that uh, whose cells are undergoing meiosis. So here's the tetrad. Now we want to see what happens if we cross over between genes B and D. So I will erase this, connect this down here, connect this up here. Okay, and there's our, our, our crossover. So let's see, these will segregate 
up and down because they're attached to the spindles. We have an A and a B and a D gamete forming from that chromatid. I'm going to follow this A up, so I'm going to put this gamete here. So we have A, B, followed down to little d, and then little a, little b, followed to big d. Little a, little b, like I said, big d. And then down here, a, b, d, all little. Okay, so this is a non-crossover gamete. This is a non-crossover gamete. We can tell that two ways, right? Because in the diagram, there's no crossing over with anything. The chromatid starts as big A, big B, big D, ends up in the gamete as big A, big B, big D. But look also at the genotype of the individual, right? A and big A, big B, big D are on the same chromosome. If we look at the genotype of the gamete, we see big A, big B, big D, these are all together. So that must be a, 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 the result of no crossing over. So we can see that two ways. Now these are the crossover gametes. We're going to call these single crossover gametes. And because we called this one class one, gametes that resulted from a crossover between A and B, we can call this one class two. It doesn't matter which one's class one, which one's class two. We have two classes. You can call them single crossover class A, and then the other one single crossover class B. It doesn't matter, um, but we'll call this one two. And we can see that it results in genotypes that are reciprocals of one, one another. So A, big A, big B, little d here, little A, little B, big D there. Okay, so we saw what happens when we get a single crossover between interval one here and a single crossover between interval two. Now let's see what happens when we do the cr double crossover, when a double crossover occurs. And so what is a double crossover? You know, I have a nice definition here in the notes. So let me point that out so I don't have to butcher the definition for all of you. So double crossover, a physical exchange of chromosome segments between the same pair of non-sister chromatids at two locations in a tetrad. It's kind of a neat definition. And it uh, definitely explains double crossover accurately. So let me diagram the double crossover for all of you. So first I will sharpen my pencil. And I think that I'll try to remember to sharpen multiple pencils before I make my next video. Now, Let me diagram this for you, and, and you could forward, fast forward this part. I don't have fancy editing software, and like I said, I don't have a whole lot of time to edit these videos. They're one shot and go, um, but you could fast forward through this part until I get this tetrad diagrammed. Okay, so here's our tetrad, and crossing over is going to happen during, and you know, you should be studying for the test right now. In chapter two, we learned that crossovers happened during meiotic prophase one, during pacotene, and you couldn't actually see the evidence of it until the diplotene uh, stage. And that's just an aside for this, this uh, video. But, Let's see how the double, what happens when we get a double crossover. So a double crossover being the physical exchange of chromosome segments between the same pair of non-sister chromatids. So if this is the pair of non-sister chromatids, if these are sisters right here, and these are sisters down here, then this one to this one is a pair of non-sisters. This one to that one is also a pair of non-sisters, and so on and so forth. The definition is the exchange of DNA has to happen between the same pair of non-sisters. So we're always going to consider these two in these diagrams as the, the pair of non-sisters. So exchange at two locations. So we're going to exchange here. 
and we're going to exchange here between interval one and interval two. Okay, now let's see well, what type of gamete genotypes these uh, a result from a double crossover between these two intervals. So this chromatid forms a big A, big B, big D gamete. This one, little a, little b, little d, and you're saying you're seeing, and we saw this at the at the end of the last lecture, right? Where when there are crossovers in a tetrad, we consider um, the non-sister chromatids that aren't involved in the crossover produce non-crossover gametes, which is why the non-crossover gametes are always higher in number or frequency than crossover gametes. So here. Let's see, we have A going down to connect to little b, and then going back up to connect to big D. And then little a down here goes up to big B, goes down to little d. Okay, so again, so non-crossover here, non-crossover here, and this is the double crossover class of gametes. We see their genotypes are reciprocals, big A, little a, little b, Big B, big D, little D. Okay, so that's how I would diagram those. Now, I have a quicker way that I'm going to go over um, in a moment, so you don't have to make the diagrams. You can quickly see where these different classes of reciprocal uh, genotypes or, or gametes are coming from. I'm going to take a break, though. Um, I'll be back in a moment.